female interpreters, data collectors, gender advisors, and female police officers. With these new approaches, interactions and communication with women and the local community becomes more effective and leads to a better understanding of the community's needs. I had an experience in one refugee camp. I tried to speak with the women there, tried to find out if they have other problems and food and so on. And the translator was a man and women would tell me, no, 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 everything's fine, everything's fantastic. And then I got went into a small room with a small group of women with a female uh, translator and the kind of things that happened were completely different. Everything was happening from FGM, from uh, rape and so on. Everywhere we have female officers deployed, we see the difference. Their understanding of the situation in order to have an early warning and also their capacity to listen, uh, the, the confidence that they can build immediately with the women that are in difficulties are an important asset. One of the things that the UN did, which really helped a lot to encourage women to join the police, was the deployment of an all-female form police unit uh, from India to Liberia. I was uh, impressed with their professionalism uh, and their expertise. I asked to be taken on night patrol in Monrovia. And as the headlights swept around this bend, there were three uniformed police officers, a Liberian national police officer, another international female police officer, and a member of the all-female form police unit, who was the only one who was armed. And uh, I could see the other two were feeling comfortable that she was there and provided that protection. The women decided to create their own mechanism called the Peace Huts. They didn't want to call them trouble, they wanted to call them something positive. And inside those Peace Huts, they're also adjudicating on issues of marital disputes, small property disputes, domestic violence issues. The police are now reporting in some communities that they're getting fewer and fewer calls about domestic violence because the Peace Hut women are actually solving these problems before they escalate into violence. Recently, governments have been developing national action plans to support the implementation of the Women, Peace and Security Agenda. They set out a range of activities that you're actually going to undertake to promote women, peace and security, and then they actually make governments accountable. A key factor in preventing violence against women and in ensuring their inclusion in peace building is the need for strong role models, both male and female. We consult with men of all ages because it's often the men who will be working as advocates in their communities, as leaders in their communities to speak out against violence. Removing discrimination against women by providing equal property rights, access to their inheritance and equal opportunities in education is an important preventative step. In many post-conflict situations, up to 40% or more of households are female-headed because of male death, disappearance, desertion, migration. In African societies, uh, women cannot inherit or cannot assume automatically the property of their disappeared spouses. So they may often be destitute, lacking any productive assets upon which they can build a post-conflict livelihood. Young women, young mothers, teenage mothers, were coming out now to seek help for especially functional literacy and functional meds. You know, a young mother will tell you, oh, you know, a nurse gives me medicine to take home for my child. I need to be able to read, you know, like what, how much five meals is when I go to a store. I need to know that I've been given the right change. نبض وكش قين كل هاي لكن حرب ما أهان أي مركز تمحيط دبعت ضلوا هاي مركز وحبك ما قام كران المهد. It's not we face it's how we grow up. Women will not have anything to say. I think they need to know their right. They need to know they have right to speak out. They need to know they can bring peace. Give empowerment to women to have a say in in this war. We want to stop the the war. Because war is killing our children. We really want the world attention to be continued for women's support in Afghanistan. And that's the only hope uh, of Afghan women. We need to stand firm. We need to let the people know that some of these things are wrong. They are not good for us anymore.
The situation is, uh, yes, it's very hard. Human courage and uh, perseverance. Educated the human, no give up, no. Be strong. Our contributions in peacemaking is very, very important because as women, we too have greater ideas that we can give to the communities. So we should be involved in peacemaking. Resolution 1325 and subsequent resolutions call for strengthening women's participation as peacemakers and peace builders, including in peace processes and governance mechanisms. While the benefits of including women in conflict resolution and peace building are well documented, the reality is that women are largely excluded from formal peace processes and the institutions that can prevent, manage and resolve conflict. During 1990 to 2010, you've seen more than 565 a peace agreement and peace settlement. Only in 16% of them, the, men, the word women issue is mentioned. Only in 7% of them, gender equality or women's rights is mentioned. And only 3% of them, uh, gender-based violence is mentioned. In all of them, there was gender-based violence and women's rights were violated. But to tell you that it's not yet there, we're not yet there. One of the problems is, of course, is that, that these uh, conflicts seem to be endemic and they repeat themselves over and over again. And uh, we need to beat that cycle. We need to start solving problems other than just letting the three or four guys who were leading the armies uh, sit down and cut uh, and, and take the, the, the results and, and try to divide them up among themselves. So it's absolutely critical that over half of the society that's there, it's bearing most of the brunt, be involved in the peace agreements. All the civil society conferences we've, we've been holding, workshops, we always insist that there must be 30% women representation. There's still resentment, particularly in the establishment, about social representation. They're not allowed to have a say when men are discussing. They're not allowed to take part in decision making and all of that. Those traditions still persist. Rwanda is the one I like to quote most, where 34% uh, of parliamentarians are women. And it's not just having women in parliament, but then seeing the bills that are passed as a result. And one can see the results there today. Women's role in public life, for me, is very important. The power of women's own advocacy must not be underestimated. International support for local organizations can help to strengthen the voices of women around the world. A lot gets said about the need for capacity building and capacity strengthening, and that is certainly there. But there is also a lot of capacity that does exist within these communities. We also, as a humanitarian organization, very often work with women to try and find solutions for other women. So one also has to take, remove a little bit this notion that their women are only victims. No, they're very much actors of their situations. They want to influence. And therefore, one also has to work with their sense of resilience and their real capacities to influence change among their community. We need to um, support very strong uh, organization, women's organizations that have been in their own countries uh, fighting for peace and to help them that their voices will be heard because they are there, they have been doing their job. I can cite the movement known as Mothers for Peace, the members of which do a lot of capacity building for women in their area. Uh, they also mobilize resources for you know small projects. They link up the, the women in the communities to other uh, institutions so that they can find out how, how these agencies can help these women on the ground. Even in very so-called repressive societies, you will find a plethora of women's organizations who are working very, very hard to build peace in their communities. That's not to say that it's easy or that it's not very dangerous for some of them. While the Women, Peace and Security agenda has progressed and strategies and training tools have been developed to empower and achieve better protection, prevention and participation of women, more remains to be done. Building effective institutional arrangements to guarantee women's protection and their full participation in peace processes will pay dividends 
by building a better, more resilient future, which will support the maintenance and promotion of international peace and security. There's a lot of skills, a lot of training, a lot of support, a lot of empowerment of women to be done. But what we know is that women are peacemakers, that women want to be involved, that they've played very important roles in a number of countries which have been through great trauma. And from the, the best experiences and practices we've seen around the world, we can support other women too to play these roles. Imagine the discussion that would happen if 20 men were in a room talking about what they need for the future. Then imagine the discussion if 20 women were in the room talking about what they need for the future. Both discussions are going to be incredibly different and varied, but imagine if we had a room where we had 10 women and 10 men talking about what they need for the future and how they can build a sustainable peace for the future generations. So challenge ourselves, set benchmarks uh, that, uh, that deliver on the, on the standards. It has to have real impact, which is visible. The judge of our effort is ultimately the communities that we are serving. What the international community needs to do at this point is take responsibility for the commitments it's already made. Every time there's work done on preventive diplomacy, every time there's work done in a peace process, every time there's rebuilding financing support given to the rebuilding of institutions post-conflict, the questions must be asked, where are women and, and am I including women's rights in all of these efforts? So I think that would be great for women, yeah. if they want them to involve in peacemaking. So we do everything, we do everything equal, not equally, but side by side.